have a confession to make. I don't know how you guys are going to take it. No, no, I'm not leaving. No, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. But some of the greatest days of my life, I spent it in the arms of another man's wife. My mother, come on. <laughs> Relax. The story's told that a young pastor went to prepare his Mother's Day sermon, and he went to his mentor, and he says, listen, I, I want to have an opening to grab the attention. So the pastor said, okay, you, you tell him this line, you know, some of the greatest days of, of my life I spent in the arms of another man's wife, and, and you pause for dramatic emphasis. <laughs> but you have to say your mother. So he says, okay, I get it, I get it, I got it. So he went to church, but he made a mistake. Just like I've made this, a similar mistake. Uh, I don't tell my wife. My, my wife does not know what I'm going to say. That way she can, you know, she can always say, ah, I didn't know. <laughs> but that Sabbath, I should have said, I mean, he should have said something to his wife. <laughs> and so the wife finishes the children's story. And so, you know, she was right there in the front. And so pastor gets up and he says, you know, some of the greatest days of my life I spent in the arms of another man's wife. And she gets up and she looks at him like, And so the guy, the pastor is like nervous. He's like, okay, the best days of my life, I spent it with another man's wife. And, 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 and the wife is coming to, to attack him. <laughs> and, and, and he goes, the best days of my life, I spent it with another man's wife. Uh, but I don't know her name. I forgot her name. <laughs> the names have been changed to protect the innocent. 900 college students, 900 college students were asked, what's the most beautiful word in the English language? 700 of them, 700 of them said, mother, mother. Hardworking, caring, patient, charming, funny, forgiving, and sweet. As we're here celebrating mothers, I, I, I received this email this week, an open letter to pastors, a non-mom speaks about Mother's Day. We have to remember that as much as we celebrate in mothers, there are many women in our audience that do not like this day. It's very painful for them. Many children, it's very painful. So this morning what I want to do is I want to celebrate the spectrum of mothering. Amen? This is a poem that was written by Amy Young. She says, To those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoption, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes and prods and tears and disappointment, we walk with you today. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who, who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you today. To those who lost their mothers, we grieve with you today. To those who experience abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who live through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who have aborted children, we remember them and you on this day. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you long for it to be. To those step-parents, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envision lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. 
to those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year. We, we, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have in our midst today real warriors. And today, we remember and honor you. Amen? Amen. But there's a reality. Mom, I love you. It changes through the years, right? At age 10, I love you, Mom. 14, my mom, you're so annoying. 18, I can't wait to leave the house. Age 25, mom, uh, you were right. Age 30, right, when the kids are here, right? Uh, mom, would you forgive me? At age 15, mom, I, I don't want to lose my mom. And at age 70, mom, I love you so much. I hear you raising kids and running a house keep me busy too. I also have this little gig on the side called the full-time job. The story's told, the story's told that there were three sons, three sons, three sons, three sons. <laughs> Sweetly. Nyah, nyah. The name of the three sons were Willie, Sean, and Daniel. Willie, Sean, and Daniel. And they got together and they said, Mother's Day is coming and we want to make sure we give mom the greatest gift ever. So Sean says, ah, oh, that's easy. I'm buying mom a house. A mansion with a pool. And, and, and Willie says, no, 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 no. I'm buying mom a Rolls Royce with her own personal chauffeur. And she wants to travel. She can go wherever she wants. Daniel says, nah, you guys don't know mom. Mom, I got mom a parrot. Not just any parrot. This parrot costs $50,000. Why? Because it speaks in English, Portuguese, and Espanol. But not only that, this bird was trained for 12 years. 12 years at a church by different elders. And this, this parrot has the Bible memorized in all three languages. And because mom can't read anymore, right, because of the eyesight... All she has to do is tell the parrot the, the, the scripture, and the parrot will tell her and recite the verse. And so all three got their gifts, delivered it to the mother. And so on Mother's Day, they all arrived at the house, and they met the mother, and they all standing there, and the mother says to, to Sean, Sean, why you buy me this big house? It has so many rooms. I'm only going to use one. And I have to clean the whole house. What were you thinking, son? And then she looks at Willie and said, Willie, I'm too old to travel. And, 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 and that chauffeur, for, chauffeur, he's so nasty. See, you two should have learned from Daniel. Daniel, thank you. Thank you for that gift. The chicken was delicious. <laughs> Things my mother taught me. Let's see if some of you could resonate. I learned from my mother foresight. My mother said, always make sure you're wearing clean underwear in case you get into an accident, right? I'll say, clean underwear, really, mom? If I get into an accident, I'll probably mess up my pants anyway, right? I learned from my mom logic. Logic. Because I said so, that's why. I learned from my mama, religion. You better pray if that stain comes out of the carpet. I learned from my mom, irony. Keep crying, I'll give you something to cry about. I learned about anticipation from mom. Oh, just wait. Just wait until we get home. <laughs> or, or wait until your dad gets home. I learned genetics from my mom. 
My mom, she says, you look just like your father. (laughs) Or you act just like your father. But the ultimate thing I learned, and this, this is not funny right now. This is not funny. I learned about justice. My mom said, don't worry. One day, you're going to have kids, and I hope they turn out just like you. (laughs) That's not funny. I want to take this opportunity. Today is Mother's Day, and we're celebrating mothers. And and we're starting next week. Next week, with Pastor Hyvett Williams. We're going to launch a Women's Week of Prayer. Women preachers, women for women, amen, amen. And so I want to take this opportunity to, to, take, to, take, to thank certain leaders. We had a health Sabbath, and, and I want to take this opportunity. Chantal, Chantal and her team put together a health fair, and they worked together, and they put together this health fair. And so I want to thank them publicly. Amen, amen, amen. I want to thank, I want to thank another mother, another mother, uh, Dana, Dana Henry. Did you, did you see the newsletter that she put together? If you haven't seen it, you need to pick a newsletter. This is how we're communicating, okay? But because it's Mother's Day, Mother's Day, there's a ministry that we have in our church called Mom's Ministry. You know that it's led by Elizabeth, 14. And so she meets every Sabbath, every Sabbath, right, during Pathfinders. And she meets and they're praying. They get together to pray. They get together to study books, books of the Bible. They have social events like their tea party and their potlucks at the picnic, picnic in the, yeah, potlucks. In the park, they just went on a women's retreat, all of them together. And so I'm just here to showcase that ministry. Remember, there is a ministry here for moms, and it's for you guys, for moms. So make sure you you check them out. They have a table in the back where they're asking for sponsors to give to needy moms. So this is a ministry for the church, by the church. Amen, Amen, amen? This morning, I want to talk about a mother's legacy, a mother's legacy. The greatest gift that you can give your children is to leave a legacy for them. And most of you may have different wishes for your children, but today I want to challenge us that the greatest legacy that you can leave your children is a spiritual legacy. Amen? I'm going to invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Oh, Father God, we thank you for the mothers. We thank you for the women that are in this room. We thank you, Father, we we can laugh at at, at, at all these experiences, but we thank you for the sacrifice of mothers. And Lord, as we look upon two women, I pray, Father, that today we may leave this place committed to leaving a, a legacy for our children. Hide me behind the cross. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Mother's Day sermon, right? Mother's Day sermon. Uh, usually we hear, <laughs> we usually hear about maybe Jochebed, Mother Moses, and, and I was leaning towards preaching about Hannah, and someone said, Pastor, really? We always hear about Hannah. <laughs> Can we think about something else? So I got on Facebook, I got on Facebook, and so I asked the question, I asked the question, hey, what is your favorite mother? Who is your favorite mother from the Bible? And whoo, got a lot of responses, a lot of responses. Uh, my favorite one, I'll start with this one. Uh, Brother Daniel said, uh, why don't we preach on Bathsheba? Although a bit controversial because she was David's lust, she is mentioned at the beginning of the Messiah, ancestry, mother of Solomon. I don't think that would have flown too well today, right? But Daniel, don't worry, for, mother, for Father's Day, for Father's Day, that month that we're going to deal with men, that's in June, we're going to deal with Bathsheba. We're going to deal with Bathsheba. But then Maria, Maria said, Maria said, how about the mother and grandmother of Timothy? Paul praises both of them for teaching Timothy. And that's when the, 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 the thread got interesting because, because Pastor Perla, Pastor Perla, <laughs> she jumped in and she said, Lois, Lois and Eunice, a mother-daughter team that nurtured and, 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 and raised Timothy, a man of God. Timothy grew up to become the apostle Paul's most trusted companion and disciple. Paul gave him strong commendation. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, it says, Paul writes, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that you first filled, filled your grandmother Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And so that right there resonated with me. 
Because everything I learned today as a pastor, I learned from my mother. Those of you who came to prayer meeting, I mentioned that. I learned about visitation. I learned about Bible study. I learned the Bible through my mother. My mother became a Seventh-day Adventist because a core porter came knocking on the door selling books. And she said, I am a Catholic. We're Catholics here. And, and so the core porter said, okay, I'll find your Catholic Bible. And so my mother said, sure, here's, here's the Catholic Bible. And the core porter showed her the Sabbath, Exodus chapter 20. And my mother said, I can't believe this. I can't believe that. I'm going to talk to my priest. And the core porter said, sure, talk to your priest. I'll be back tomorrow. And so my mother went, spoke to the priest, and the priest said, and I quote, well, if you want to be biblical, the Seventh-day Adventists are correct. And so my mother said, fine, I'll never come back here again. <laughs> and so we became Seventh-day Adventists. And from that moment, my mother took it upon herself to raise her children loving and serving God. My mother was the only Christian in the home. My father said, oh, wait a minute, I didn't marry you as a Christian. No, 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 no. So you want to you wanna follow that crazy religion, uh, that's fine, but don't force that upon me. And so my father was smart enough to know, we lived in the South Bronx, that taking the children to church maybe is not a bad idea, right? And so my father also agreed, instead of putting the children in public school, let's make the sacrifice and put them in a safe environment. Let's put them in Christian school. And that right there to this day, I take my hat off to my mother and father because they sacrificed. My mother and father still live in the South Bronx because they put their children in Christian schools. And so everything that I learned about Christianity, about Adventism, I learned from my mother. And so here is Paul. Paul was in prison. Paul was in chains. And instead of writing that how, how depressed he was and how messed up the church was, he decided to write a letter to Timothy, his mentee. And there he says, he says to Timothy, I thank God whom I serve as my forefather did with a clear conscience as night and day. I constantly remember you in my prayers. This brother was in prison. He wasn't praying for himself. But he was so impressed with Timothy because he saw something in Timothy that he saw in the mother and the grandmother. And so he says, while I'm locked up here, man, I am praying for you. And so this humbled me. This humbled me. Because Paul in Ephesians chapter 6, he says, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayer. I thought that was a smack in the face for me. I need to, take, I need to embrace that same spirit where every morning I, I want to thank God for Miami Temple. I want to thank God for what's happening in this church. Let me, say, let me tell you, I, I, was in, I was in Texas and I was bragging about you guys. I was talking about prayer meeting, how prayer meeting, we have an average of 80 to 90, sometimes 100 people come to prayer meeting. And they're like, what? I said it in a pastor's meeting here. And they're like, wait, what, what are you doing? We can't get more than five people to come out to prayer meeting. And then I told them, I told them about the all in, that we're meeting at five in the morning on Tuesday. And I said, man, the first night we had over 90 people show up. And last week we, we had, I think it was like 80, 85 people because of the rain. And Texas was like, what? What's happening in that church? I said, the Holy Spirit is in this church. And so, and so, amen, amen. And so check this out, check this out. So I kind of I gave the idea. I kind of gave the, the idea. Well, then you guys, if, if you want revival in your church, you need to wake up at 5 in the morning and meet here in the church. And they said, well, you're not our pastor. <laughs> so, so they decided, someone made a, made a motion. Can we meet at 8 in the morning on Tuesdays? And so they did. That's fine. But here's what I'm trying to say. I need to be humble I need to remember how God is working in our church, and I need to pray for each and every one of you. That's why we want to visit you. We want to know you. We want to talk to you. We want, you to have, we want to have this relationship with you. And so here's what I want to talk to the mothers today. If you want to leave a legacy 
of spirituality. You need to model faith. Look what Timothy says. He says, I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Let me remind the church that faith is not hereditary. Faith is taught. But let me be more specific. Faith is caught. I don't know if you, ca- you, 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 you caught that. <laughs> it's not enough for me to say, hey, let's pray, church. Let's pray. No, 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 no. Are you having family worship in your house? Are you waking up in the morning and calling the children? This Wednesday, I talked to the women. I talked to the women. I said, the, the men are the spiritual leaders of the home. Amen, 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 amen. Men, men. But I said, if the man is not doing his role, woman, you need to step up like Deborah. We learned about Deborah. And how Deborah stepped up to the plate as she led Israel. And so in your home, you need to make sure that the flag of faith is waving. Because let me remind you, let me remind you, faith is not hereditary. He said that your faith is sincere, which means it's unhypocritical faith. Faith that is real without any pretense. They were serious about their faith and no one knows better than a child whether a parent's faith is genuine. Ouch. Hello, somebody. You all say sometimes, oh, pastor, you're such a nice man. You're, you're such a spiritual leader. The day I hear that from my kids is when I believe it. Because my kids live with me. It's very easy to put on the suit and tie and, and preach and, and, and make you laugh and, and, and make you think. But how about at home? Something to think about. So Paul said, I see a sincere faith in you, Timothy, that I saw in your mother. I saw that in your mother. Next slide. I just lost connection here. Next slide, guys. It says here, Perla said, this is the last note. Despite being around unbelievers, Lois and Eunice knew God. They lived a life that reflected God and surely defended what they knew. And as a result, they passed on their faith to the next generation. See, she was preaching on Facebook. (laughs) And so here's what I learned about faith with my mother. My mom made sure, listen to me, we were Adventists. We were Seventh-day Adventists. But if there was a party, if there was a relative having a party on the Sabbath, we went to church first. And my mom made sure we're going to go to the party. We're not going to dance. We're not going to participate. We're going to eat. But our presence is going to be there because how are they going to know about Christianity if we don't show up? If all we do is hide and stay at the church? I learned that from my mom. And my mom to this day, all those brothers and all those relatives that made fun of us because we ate beans without the ham, right? All of the family members today are Christians, And all of them give my mother the honor and glory. And then they give it to God, but they said, you know what? You showed us Jesus because you never condemned us. And so that's where I learned that from my mom. And so many of you probably are are involved in a relationship where maybe your husband is not a Christian. Continue to shine the light for Jesus Christ. Amen? Because my mother taught me something else. She was a prayer warrior. And she prayed for 24 years. 24 years. I had given up on my dad. But my father got baptized 24 years later. Amen? Here, here's what someone else said. Elizabeth said, oh, if I'm not wrong, I, I think so. Timothy's mother was married with a non-Christian, right? This is a good subject for many moms living with similar si- situations. And Pastor Perla said, you're right, Elizabeth. Eunice had married a Greek man, a Gentile, therefore an unbeliever. Okay? So here's what I'm talking about today. If you want to transfer your faith to your children... If you want to leave a legacy for your children, look what Paul said to Timothy. From childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. In biblical times, it was not the Father who taught the Bible. In biblical times, in in the Jews, it was the mother. And sometimes they started as early as five years old. And so here's my mom. My mom lived this verse. She lived this verse. Hear, O Israel, the Lord God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these commandments that I give you today are to beware. 
They need to be in your heart first, parent, your heart, mother. And then it says, impress them upon your children. Impress them upon your children. When? Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up, tie them as symbols of your hand. When they wake up in the morning, make sure you're praying with your children. Make sure you have family worship. Sit together as a family, have breakfast, have lunch, have dinner together if possible. Make sure when you come back home, you have a family worship. And I do this in my house. I put the kids to bed. I, I pray with each one, give them a kiss, and I tell them this. I tell them this. I see you in the morning. I see you in the morning. And, 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 and for a long time, they know what that means now. But I'm not talking about I see you in the morning the next day. Because I don't know if I'm going to wake up. I may die in my sleep. And so I'm reminding my children, if daddy should pass away, I will see you in the morning of the resurrection. That is our responsibility as parents. And so my mom, my mom, my mom, bendito, as poor as she was, Uncle Arthur, bendito, my mom, she's, and these books, they were and they're still expensive, okay? My mom in her broken English, my mom in her broken English, she would teach us, then to all his soldiers, he gave this glorious, you know, she would just read to us. <laughs> and our Friday nights, our Friday nights, she would say, here's the book, you know how to read, go read. <laughs> and so she taught me through these books. How do you leave a spiritual legacy for your children? You have to bring them to Sabbath school. Praise God. This is what I'm hearing. This is what I heard with my own ears. You ready for this? That Miami Temple has the best Sabbath school in this area. Amen. Praise God. I heard that. Some of you don't believe that because you're like, oh, okay, whatever. Because you're not coming. <laughs> You need to bring them to Sabbath school. But not only bring them to Sabbath school, church, you need to study the lesson with them. And my mom, my mom would read the lesson with us. My mom would study the lesson with us. If you want them to, to grow, and you know what? Mothers, you need to pray with your children. You need to pray with your children. Amen? Amen? But not only pray with your children. Make sure that your children see you praying. Make sure they see you studying the Bible. Make sure they see you sharing your faith. Because that's how the legacy is passed on. Ellen White said this, Next to God, listen to this, Next to God, the mother's power for good is the strongest known on earth. Amen? Amen. Oh, come on, come on, church. Paul said to Timothy, Don't neglect the gift that God has given you. You have your mother's faith. You have your grandmother's faith. Probably the grandmother used to take the grandson to church to Sabbath school because mommy couldn't make it. Grandmother was there. Maybe I'm talking to a grandmother. Maybe your daughter is working, but you continue bringing your children, your grandchildren to church because they could be Timothy. And so Paul says to Timothy, for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of what? Power, love, and self-control. And then Paul talks about this. Do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me and his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. That's why as Christians... I could say to Brother George, you will see your brother again. Amen? Amen. Oh, the Bible says, the Bible says. But before we do that, let me interrupt for a commercial break. <laughs> After 21 years of marriage, I want to talk to the kids. Can I talk to the kids? I'm going to talk to the kids, to the young people. Listen to me. There was a husband and a wife, and after 21 years of marriage... His wife said to him, honey, there is a woman that is madly in love with you, and she wants to go on a date with you, and I want you to take her on a date. Now, husbands, we hear that, and we're like, okay, this is a setup, right? This is, 
what am I supposed to say? She goes, no, your mother. The mother of this son was widowed for 19 years. And so the wife says to the, to the husband, I need you to invite her and take her out to dinner. So the son calls the mother and says, Mom, I want to take you out on a date. The mother said, uh, what's wrong? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, Mom, I, I just want to take you out. Can we go out? She goes, sure. What do I wear? I said, Mom, wear something nice. We're going to go to a nice fancy restaurant. And so she got dressed. And the next day she got dressed and she put on her anniversary dress that she wore for the last time 19 years before. The son shows up to the house in a limo. The driver goes and picks her up and, and escorts her to the car. They drive to this fancy restaurant. And now the, 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 the son is, is, is pampering the mother. And, and the mother takes the, 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 the menu and, and, and she, can't, she can't read. She can't see it. So the son takes the menu and starts reading the, the options to the mother. And the mother starts laughing. She goes, wow, I used to read the menu to you when you were a kid. And so now how life has turned around. He goes, yes, mom, what is it that you want? She goes, are you paying? She goes, yes. Well, I want the most expensive dish. <laughs> so, so they eat, right? They talk. And, and, and the son goes, let's go, let's go to a movie. So they go to see Avengers, Age of Ultron. No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. No, they didn't. They go to a movie, and they're watching the movie, but they're talking, they're talking, they're talking. They're having a wonderful time. And the mother and the son gets back on the limo, and they're driving back to the mother's house. And the mother says to the son, oh, this was wonderful. I love you, son. And the son goes, I love you too, mom. I don't know why we never did this before. And she goes, well, there'll be other times. And so he walked his mother to the door, and he gave her a kiss on the forehead, a hug, and he left. A couple of days later, the phone rings. The mother died. The mother passed away. The family was shocked. The, the, the son was like, I, I can't believe this. I, I just took her to a restaurant the other day. And so you could imagine how his head was spinning. So they did the funeral, and, and they get home, and, and the male was just, he, he didn't want to bother. And so a week passed, two weeks passed, and he finally decided, well, I have to go on with my life. And he finds this envelope that was in his mother's handwriting. And so he opens it up. And inside the envelope was a receipt. And so he looks at the receipt, and I'm going to read to what she said because this is amazing. She said to the son, Son, I made a reservation for us, and I paid this bill in advance. I wasn't sure that I could be there, but I paid for two plates, one for you and the other one for your wife. You will never know what that night meant for me. I love you, son. I'm saying this to the children. I'm saying this to, we need to take advantage of our moms while they're here. Amen? Amen. My mom is crazy, okay? <laughs> I know, she, no, she's going to see seeing this on YouTube later. But, <laughs> But my kids know, Linda knows, my mom is crazy. <laughs> She's crazy in love for me. No, no, no. She's crazy. <laughs> when I decided that I was going to go to college, I said I had enough with Adventist education. I said this. And this is, listen to me, mothers, because I'm having a hard time. Ray Lynn, Ray Lynn in next year, she's going to college. I bendito. <laughs> I told my mom, I told my mom, I don't want to go to Adventist college. I want to know if I could be an Adventist outside the bubble. And my mother looked at me and she says, did you pray about it? <laughs> and I said, yes, I prayed about it. She goes, okay, I will respect your wishes. 
So I went searching high and low. I, I wanted to leave New York. I was so crazy. I wanted to leave the house. You know where I wanted to go? I wanted to go to Canada. I wanted to go far, far away. But God said, you're not going to Canada. You're going to the great state of Texas. And so I was in Texas. And my mother said, okay, I'm going to go with you. <laughs> wait, 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 what do you mean you're going with me? No, 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 no. I'm going to help you relocate. I'm going to help you move with the boxes. And then we're going to find an Adventist church. <laughs> Mom, uh, I think I could find the church. No, 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 no. Yo voy a ir y yo voy contigo. <laughs> I'm going to go and I'm go with you. So I'm not lying. She's crazy, okay? We go to the church. She finds the, the, the nearest church next to my apartment. She makes an appointment with the pastor. We meet the pastor. She introduces herself. She introduces me this way. This is my son. He's a good boy. <laughs> He's never left my side. So I am leaving him under your care like Hannah did with Samuel. I told you she's crazy, but that's not the worst of it. And she looked, she stood up, and she looked at the pastor and said, let me tell you something. Si mi hijo se pierde, if my son gets lost, his blood will be on your head. So I don't want to hear from you guys saying that your mother is strict and your mother's crazy. My mother's crazy, okay? <laughs> As a matter of fact, the day of my wedding, real quick story, the day of my wedding, my father was helping me with the tux, and my mother asked me a question. She was nervous, and I kind of gave her kind of like, like back lip, you know? Oof. My mother picked the broom, and she beat me. <laughs> she says, yo soy tu madre. <laughs> I am your mother. <laughs> So I say this, young people, children, you need to love and respect your mom because I miss her. I miss her. Let me land this plane. Let me land this plane. Because I forgot to mention something. I forgot to mention something. I forgot to mention that I was not going to preach. I was just going to do the introduction today. The real sermon is coming. Get ready. The real sermon is coming. Ellen White said, let me talk to the mothers here. Mothers, Ellen White says, great responsibility rests upon you mothers. You may aid them to, de to develop characters that will not be swayed or influenced to do evil, but will sway and influence others to do right. By your fervent prayers of faith, you can move the arm that moves the world. Amen? She goes on to say, the prayers of Christian mothers are not disregarded by the Father of all. He will not turn away your petitions and leave you and yours to the buffetings of Satan in the great day of final conflict. It is for you to work with simplicity and faithfulness, and God will establish the works of your hand. She says, the life work performed on earth is acknowledged in the heavenly courts as a work well done. With joy, unutterable parents will see the crown, the robe, the harp given to their children. The seed sown with tears and prayers may have seemed to be sown in vain, but the harvest, their harvest is reaped with joy at last, and their children have been redeemed. I'm talking to a mother whose child is not here today. I'm talking to maybe a grandmother whose child was here once, is no longer here. I'm saying to you this morning, keep praying, because God is going to answer those prayers. It says, when the well done of the great judge is pronounced and the crown of immortal glory is placed upon the brow of the victor, many children will raise their crowns in sight of the assembled universe and pointing to their mothers will say, she made me all I am through the grace of God, through her instructions, through her prayers, have been blessed to my eternal salvation. Oh, I'm done. But there's a mother here who's not receiving her Mother's Day gift tomorrow. There's a mother here who has been praying for years for her child. The last time I preached, I preached a sermon called All In. 
And I have to be honest, it was a little rough. I kind of smacked you guys up a bit. And at the end of the sermon, I felt bad. I felt like, man, was I too rough on the members? Ah, I was too negative. But that night, at five in the afternoon, I received an email from a visitor, a child that was here. And she said, Pastor, I am all in. Not only will you see me on Tuesday at five in the morning, I want to get baptized. Yeah. Remember this, church. When I stand up here and speak, I'm not giving you a lecture like a teacher prefer- prepares for a lecture. There's a Holy Spirit that talks in me through me. And I have to say, I was humbled. And so this child said, you have to promise me that you will not tell my mom. Now, that was hard. So I don't know if you know this. Men, cover your ears. We like to gossip. (laughs) But God is good. Because last week I was not here. God (laughs) took me to Texas. (laughs) And so this morning... We're going to have an opportunity to see and witness a mother's prayer answered. And she's going to receive that gift. And if there's any mother here who's still praying or may have lost hope, today is your, you're going to walk away with something and says, you know what? This mother received her blessing. I'm going to receive my blessing as well. So I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to get dressed. But there's a video that I want you to see. Prepare your, your handkerchiefs because it's one of those videos, all right? Can you please play, play, uh, play the video? One thing I wish I could be better at as a mom would be to think before I speak because words really do matter to them. I wish I could spend more quality time with my kids. I wish I could take away the pain. I don't know. I wish I could take away the pain that I caused them when I divorced their dad. I wish that I was a better listener. I wish I could be better at managing my time. I wish I could be more patient with my kids. Hero mom. My mom is super sweet. My mom is so cool. My mom is so awesome and hot. Awesome. <laughs> My mom really loves me. I love about my mom that she takes good care of the babies because she's a foster mom. At Disneyland, what I love to do with my mom is go down to Splash Mountain and we do a special pose and it looks like this. My mom is really smart because she listens to the Bible. My mom takes really good care of me. She makes me feel really important. You're the best mom. She is my best friend, she really is. Um, I love all her phone calls. She always apologizes for calling me. So sorry, I know you're busy and thank you for answering, but I love when she calls me. It's like one of the best parts of my day. I think she's pretty great. She always makes me feel like uh, she's my number one fan and uh, no matter what I'm doing in my life or what I've done, she's always praising me for doing a good job and and, uh, makes me feel important and uh, You know, I I appreciate that from her. 
Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you so much. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. I hope this makes you cry. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you so much. I feel so loved, and I I know how much he loves me, and I know that um, that I'm doing a better job than I think I am. Unconditional love is something that I think we will never fully understand until we get to heaven. But I, I can feel that with my kids. It's like, no matter what, you always feel that love from them, just like I try to give that love to them. But there's nothing like it, and it's amazing. It's my honor and privilege to reveal the second part of the sermon. <clears throat> There's a mother here today who wishes her child was with her. Her child told her that she had to work today. So Mercy, come here and join me. Bring your glasses and bring your family. And somebody help her up here, please. Mercy did not know this, but two weeks ago, Blair decided to be baptized. Mercy, come this way, please, first. She wanted you to read a portion of the Bible, but I don't think you're going to be able to. So I'll read it for you. This is what Blair wanted her mother to read. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward, for, reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise from Blair. Surprise. Mercy, I'm so sorry. I wanted to tell you. It was hard. But your prayers have reached the throne room of God. And today, Blair heard and is surrendering her life to Jesus Christ. I, saw, I said to Blair, because she lied on the Sabbath to her mom. I said, don't worry, we're going to baptize you and your sins are going to be washed away. <laughs> so, after this, no lying, okay? Let's pray. Oh, Father God, this is the sermon right here. This right here is what this church is about. We are a hospital. We are a place for sinners. And Father, I'm so humbled because she heard your voice through all the shouting and through all those, that sermon. She said, Father, I am all in. I surrender my life to you. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, she, she, she had a birthday two days ago. And for Mother's Day, she is giving her life to you as a gift to her mother. But she is a new child in a minute. And so I'm going to pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit that you may forgive her of all her sins. And as she goes down the watery grave and comes back a new person, empower her with your spirit to bring others to your feet. It is my greatest honor to baptize Blair in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
this is like the greatest gift ever. She told me this morning that she was going snorkeling under the water and that there was a cross of Jesus. She told me this morning. <laughs> so this is the water she was talking about. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up because we're going to celebrate. And while we're singing, while we're singing, while we're singing, if there's someone out there who wants to surrender their life to Jesus and wants to say, hey, just like Blair, I, I want to be baptized one day. I'm going to invite you while we're singing. Just come up front and, and we're going to pray with you. That's it. That's all we're going to do. Okay? So I'm going to ask if we could all stand. We could all stand. <laughs> 